Okay, you're David Jackson. Yes, Your Honor. 19 33521. Raise your right hand, sir. You saw the Twitter or thumbnail statement you made today. Who do you have to do? I'm nothing but the truth. So, what do you got? Yes, Your Honor. Lord. In this cause number, there is a first amended motion to revoke and indicate a probation at the final. Looks like August 30th of last year. That's the defendant waiting for the meeting with this who will pursue the Senate? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. In summary, this first amended motion alleges that on October 14, 2021, in this court, you were placed on a seven years deferred or unadjudicated probation for evading arrest or detention with the motor vehicle. It was a third degree felony? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. Allegation one states you committed the what was he doing? I believe all of them, Your Honor. One states. You committed the offensive theft of a firearm on that, about April 20th. Oh, I'm sorry. That was refused, Your Honor. So that won't so, 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 yeah. yeah. I so forgot about to change your story. Yes, I'll change my story. We're, we're not clean true to account number one, but I think it's count number two. Let me see. Right. Uh, one, two. So you're to identify people. Yes. Yeah, yes. Four, yeah, we're doing that one in the money. In the, uh, okay. Number like, two says that David Lionel Jackson, the fourth, that's you. You're a fourth. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, committed the offense of failure to identify fugitive false information on or about April 20th, 2022, in Jefferson County, Texas, in that you intentionally gave a fictitious name and residence address and date of birth to a peace officer you knew who was a peace officer who had lawfully detained you and had requested the information at the time of the detention. You were a fugitive from justice. And is that true and correct? Yes, um, give it a sign. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure he was a fugitive at the time. I think he just gave a uh, well. Um, he gave. There's some explanation. I might have does to it, explain. Look, look. Does it matter if he's a fugitive or not? No, that's okay, what I'm saying. Because if there's something about it, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to fugitive that. Okay. Yeah. So that everybody is listening. Not. I don't think that's going to make a difference. Is that's it? what I'm saying. I don't think it's going to hang up the rest of everything else, Your but I, I, I. Okay. All right. Any objection? I'm going to take out the portion. And at the time of the detention, the defendant was a fugitive from justice. No objection, you say, Your Honor. And what remains is against the peace and dignity of the state. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. Uh, how do you, can you be true to this? Three, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Three states, if you fail to avoid injurious or vicious habits by possessing a firearm, that can't be read right, as directed by the court. It should say, you fail to avoid injurious or vicious habits as directed by the court by possessing a firearm. It should That's good. No objection to having the court wants to read it, Your Honor. Just take as directed by the court out. That's unnecessary language. Yes, Your Honor. That. No objection. So, once again, that you fail to avoid injurious or vicious habits by possessing a firearm on or about April 20th, 2022, in violation of condition two of defendant's deferred adjudication order. And that should be by knowingly possessing. Um, does the defendant waive? Um, I'm adding knowingly. That's fine, Your Honor, no objection. You're waiving any additional time? That yeah, yes, Your Honor. be a lot of under law? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, do you understand what you started with there, sir? Yes, sir. Is that true or untrue? True, Your Honor. Four, you failed to immediately report to the probation officer your arrest. And actually, none of these are good because which arrest would that be? It doesn't. There is nothing about an arrest up to this point. Um, we're going to skip that. That's, that's just not well written. Five. 
you provided your example on or about August 9th, 2022, which showed the presence of tetrahydrocannabinol in really one. Is that true? Yeah, John. And also, <laughs> are you pleading true to allegations two, three, and five of this first amendment motion we both going to adjudicate probation? Voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently, and because those are true as they are alleged. Yes, sir. You understand by pleading true to one or more of these, that is enough to grant a, uh, this motion to revoke probation. Yes. Your probation can be revoked. You can be found guilty and sentenced up for a full range of punishment. And this is a third degree felony, which means you're looking at no less than two, no more than 10 years confinement in prison. Knowing that, you insist on pleading true. Yes, Sean. I find you are pleading true, Bob, and apparently you understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true. Do you have any agreement on this? No agreement, Your Honor. Okay. We're letting the court decide this one. Yeah, I'd I like to call my client just to, to go over some of these allegations. Just want to, hey, David, uh, you heard some of the allegations. The first one I want to talk about is the fail to ID. Uh, you pled true to that because you didn't, I guess, clarify, but but what ultimately happened? What name did you give the officer? The name that I gave to the officer was David Jackson. Okay. And I am the fourth. So me being the fourth, when they booked me into jail, they actually booked me in in my dad's name. So Yes, you did, did not give them the full correct name because you didn't add, it, add additional part in there, but it wasn't an attempt to hide your name, was it, as far as you and the call? You weren't trying to avoid being known as David Jackson. You just didn't give the rest of the full name. Okay, all right. So uh, so then your intent was not to try to mislead the officers. You didn't think to give them the rest of the name because you're a fourth. Okay, all right. Um, and you, at one point you did... Uh, 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 use some marijuana. Okay. All right. And you knew you weren't supposed to do that, but you did that anyway, right? Okay. All right. And did, oh, yes. Speak up so you can hear it. And uh, you did fail to tell your probation officer about when you got arrested. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Why did you not tell the officer about that? I actually wasn't aware of it at the time. Okay. And she went, she actually, um, first got on probation, she actually went down with all the rules with me. But I actually, I wasn't aware of doing okay. that. No. All right. Um, so, but, but otherwise, besides the, the, the violation where you used some drugs and didn't report, how have you been doing on probation since then? I've been reporting every time of my report date. I finished all of my community service within the first year. I had 600 hours of community service. I finished all of them within a year, so I did long as I finished all my community service within the first year of adjudication, I was able to get 300 credit. So I was able to finish um, community service within okay. that time. Okay. So you've been and checking in, doing community service, doing everything you thought you were supposed to be doing? Yes, I've been okay. doing it. And uh, uh, as far as money goes, you've been paying all your money? Yes, okay. I've been paying all my money. Okay. Now, currently, you are currently behind right now, right? Right. Okay. And I want to get into that. There's a reason why you're behind, right? Yes. Okay. One of our last court dates when you were supposed to be here, you did not show up. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And why didn't you show up? Um, I actually got shot, and I had a very, very okay. Okay. bad surgery. Okay. And okay. I had to get my stomach cut, and I also had to wear a catheter. That's what I'm wearing right now, currently. Um. I actually got to take urine through a catheter, okay. and I'm still having pains okay. within all that urine. Um, okay. so, you, so you have quite a bit of medical problems going on right now. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you're recovering, but slowly. Okay. Yes. Right? Okay. And like I said, you have to uh, release urine out of a catheter. You can't just go to the restroom like you used to do. Okay. okay. And you don't even know how long this is going to be for, do you? No. I don't. They're still doing surgeries on you. are still doing uh, yes. uh, work. Yes. And uh, you may get, you may recover fully. You may not. You don't know yet. Yes. Okay. I actually have to get another bladder surgery. You have another bladder surgery coming up, right? Okay. Yes, All right. Uh, you're asking the court to continue on probation. Is that right? Yes. Sir. Okay. You think that you can continue on and, and, and catch up on the money that you owe? Yes. Okay. I can. Okay. You can catch up. Uh, I can catch up. Okay. Uh, as far as community service, you already done that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you don't have any of that to do, uh, which might be a problem now. But uh, 
otherwise, you can follow the rules and, and, and do what you need to do. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Pass away, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jackson, if it says in the report here that you gave the name of uh, Tyrants Jackson, would that be true or false? That's false. Do you have a police officer here? Uh, yes, sir. I can have him here in five minutes. He's right across the street. And I, I spoke with Mr. West, and he Mr. said he's pleading true to this. I can't so I, tell you, you attempted to deceive me, and you're sunk, okay? That's all I'm going to tell you. I see where, where this is headed, and, and that's okay. Your future depends upon the choices you make in this hearing, whether you're going to be honest and forthright or not. But what's happened is, you pleaded true to this number two, and you turned around and testified that you didn't commit the crime <laughs> because the elements say you intentionally give a false statement, and you just tried to convince this court that you gave a name. And I'm a junior. I give John Stevens, and not thinking that I'm going to trick somebody into thinking that they're uh, that there's somebody that's 25 years older than me who's my dad. And he's a senior. But no, what you told me was what you said, and it's on the record. She puts down everything. And it was clear that you gave your correct name. And your correct name it, it may or may not include the fourth, but nobody's going to call me a liar if I'm not going to accept them if I say I'm John Stevens, even though I don't say it's John Stevens Jr. every time. And but but what he said was not your name that was given. And we're going to bring the police officer and I'll give them all the time they need to bring a police officer. But the last thing you want to do can he is trick and lie to me at this stage of your probation. Okay, that's all. Just a warning. Honesty means everything. Everything, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Honesty is an intentional act. Uh, when, when you're not going to be honest, it's obvious that you're committing a, an intentional act to deceive. And I'm the last person um, who is your supervising official on a third degree felony that you want to lie. That's all. I'm going to tell and you. your honor, just, Next, to be, go ahead. Sorry, just to be clear for the record, the name he gave in the actual offense report is Tyrants David Jackson. So the, still, the first name was Tyrants, uh, the name that he gave, according yeah, to that's the That's what he said. That's he correct. said David Jackson. Yes, sir. Yeah. As opposed to his dad. So we're, you know, we'll, I'll give you some time. Yes, sir. They'll be okay, bro. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you want to get anybody else to testify up here? We got. Um, your Honor, you want to uh, let me uh, provide an ear and say if he can pass the witness back to me. I think I can maybe clear that up and, and we don't have to do that. I've already sworn him in. If no, he no. wants to say he committed perjury a little while ago, that's his business. But you're not going to lie to this court. This is this is court of honor, not a deception. Now, I'll pass the witness back, Your Honor. Mr. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, you heard a moment ago that the name of Tyrants David Jackson. Do you know a Tyrants David Jackson? Yes, Your Honor. Who's that? That is actually my cousin. Okay. Now, uh, uh, did you add the name Tyrants before you added David Jackson? I mean, did you say that name or mention that name to the officer? Where Where did he get his name from? Is what I'm saying. Why did he? Um, yes, I gave the officer that name, Tyrants David Jackson. Okay. And why, why did you lie to me like that? Why would you look me in the eye and under oath and wait when I am the determiner of your future and just lie, bold face lie? You don't think we've been doing this long enough to, I, I can, we, we, we've done this long enough, we can tell when people aren't telling the truth. And I knew it was, I, I mean, it didn't ring true at all. And it didn't take long to ferret it out, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> Well, that's no way to handle this problem. I really you probably. fell in the hole. We gave you a shovel to get out, and all you decided to do was dig the hole deeper, not to use it as a tool to get out. 
That's, but if you're not the first person who does that, but I'll just shake my head in bewilderment because you've got nothing to gain and everything to lose by lying to me. I get just frustrated. It's like walking a car wreck out. I don't want to see that. This is this is a, a, a room of choice making. Yes, you decide the choices you want. Yes, and, you and you have to stand by the ramification of your choices. If they're deceitful and you're caught, you pay a price. Yes, That's what Sean is the only other question I had to make sure to clarify. Your Honor, State would just call Miss Campos, Alexandria Campos. Raise your hand. You solemnly swear to affirm that the statement you made today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Miss Campos, please state your name for the record. Sandria Campos. And Miss Campos, uh, how are you presently employed? Um, by Jefferson County Community Supervision. Okay. okay. And Miss Campos, uh, are you familiar with the David Lionel Jackson the Fourth? I am. And do you see him uh, standing here today? Yes, I do. Do you please point and describe what he's wearing? White shirt. Black. Your Honor, State would just ask that the record reflect the witness identified the defendant. Yes. yes. And uh, Ms. Campos, uh, do you supervise Mr. Jackson on uh, probation? I do. Okay. And as part of his terms and conditions, um, is it that he not use or possess any drug? Or use of possession of and uh, prescriptions for any and all medication must be disclosed to your probation officer. Okay. okay. Um, on or about the ninth day of August 2022, did Mr. Jackson uh, provide a urine sample uh, to your office? Yes, he did. And did it test uh, show positive for the presence of tetrahydrocannabinol? Yes. Okay. And also, uh, did Mr. Jackson on that same date, the ninth day of August 2022, uh, provide a urine sample that showed positive for the met metabolic uh, byproducts of opiates? Yes. And those were both uh, violations of Condition 10 of the defendant's uh, probation order? Yes, sir. Uh, pass the witness, Your uh, How's Mr. Jackson been doing on probation since? Uh, uh, being released after this motion of revoke has been filed? Since he's been on bond, mm -hmm. um, he reports as directed. Uh, he did draw that drug test while on bond. Um, he has the GPS monitor, no violation, no zone violations, but he does have a charging issue like often, like a okay. phone charger. Um, he's currently behind $269, um, but I know he's not working because of his health condition at the moment. Okay. And as far as health condition, you heard him talk about kind of his health condition earlier. Do you, uh, uh, does that all sound correct? Yes. Okay. Because you were informed of his, his situation as well. And even you and I talked about coordinate about it, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, uh, and it, is he also true that he's done his community service? Yes. Okay. So that what he testified earlier is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so he has, besides picking up this new belt ID and failing the drug test, he's been, he's been pretty good though, right? Yes. Relatively, I mean, okay. Uh, no major, no other major concerns. Okay. Pass the witness. Uh, no further questions from the witness, Your Honor. Stay with me. I'll go first, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I, we were going to request for Mr. Jackson to continue on probation. Uh, we have, in essence, two violations. We have him committing the new offensive felt ID, and you heard of his testimony. He, he, he admitted that he did tell the wrong name, um, uh, and he's going to eventually pay the price for that because we're going to have to go to the misdemeanor court and take care of that. That's 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 going to be there, okay? Um, and then he failed one drug test here uh, uh, while he was out on bond, which is, is bad, uh, but... Um, uh, it is what it is. I would argue to let him continue on probation or to even if he wanted to continue, hold it in abeyance for some time out in the future, however the court wanted to do it, uh, to see how he's how he's uh, going to be doing in the future. Also, his recovery. He's got some medical issues coming up, got surgeries. That's also going to be a burden on the county if we put him in the, in the jail for now or the state to take care of all of his recovery, his medical care from here on out. Uh, 
if these violations were greater, I, I wouldn't argue that. I wouldn't even bring that up. But I think the fact that this is just a, it's a, I don't say anything, any crimes minor because all crimes are serious, but in our system, it's a class B, it's, it's a smaller uh, crime here, felt ID um, and THC, it's marijuana. If this was meth or PCP or something different, I, I know how the court feels about that, but we're talking about one felt for, for marijuana. Uh, he hasn't felt since then. Uh, there was no reports of that before that time. Uh, so I would, uh, give him a chance to continue on and see how, how he does. Uh, just as the court's aware, uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, obviously, uh, Pled true to possessing a firearm uh, in violation of his probation conditions, as well as testing positive to the opiates and the tetrahydrocannabinol. Um, he's also, as he testified, been shot as well, uh, and does have health conditions as a well, result of that. Nobody's really let me know much about the details on that. I'm not quite sure, Your Honor. What what happened there? How'd you, why'd you get shot? Why'd you get shot? What what happened there? I was just innocent bystander. It was. I like, can't hear. You. Talk about it. I'm, I'm sorry. You gotta speak up, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I was actually and truthfully. Yes, sir. I must say. Yes, sir. I was actually an innocent bystander. I was caught in the middle of a crossfire. I was grazed in my head, and I was actually shot in my lower back. That actually came out through my bladder. When was and, that? That happened November 7th. Last year? Of 2022. Yes. Yeah. What, what were the circumstances? Was somebody arrested or anything like that? I still, I'm still currently trying to push charges. Were the police called out to the scene? Yes, yes. I actually called the police. Yes. I'm not aware of a case that we have, Your Honor, yeah, on that. Just but, probation. Uh, we're finding out. I find out. I found out uh, a court date. And then I did see him in office and he just like, explained that he was shot. Did but you, we don't know anything about him being shot? Was the circumstances were out there? Was that happening in Vaughn? I was made aware of it the night before or when it happened, they called my office the next morning because he was supposed to be in court because we actually showed up the three of us to court and we got told and then uh, I think your court or one of the bailiffs or somebody confirmed that he was in fact in the hospital at the time. Do you know the name of the individual? I, I, I don't, I don't know any, but he said he called the police. I, I somebody else called the police. Or did you call the police? Or? I ransom a uh, nearby neighbor door and knocked on the door and I just laid there. And the I, police I was, showed I, up, I, I guess. Yeah, police showed up. They most they definitely. done an investigation. Do you remember so what they that was? Investigation? Yeah, the date? Not, that was November, November 7th. November 7th? It was November 7th. Where? What's the address? What, what, what street? What, what, what? Was it a street and a residence or a business? Uh, it was a street. Um, let me say Georgetown Street. Georgetown. Around, um, what's that area? Langham. And that's a very quiet area. Langham, off of College, and mm -hmm. around Georgetown area. So what were you doing there? Leads me to have. What were you doing? I was there at that time. Sir? What were you doing there? Why well, were you in that area? Yeah, you're choking back a little bit here. I was actually staying there. Staying there? Yes. You mean like living there was an it was an uh, a temporary residence. Thing. temporary okay. residence. Did you know that? Stand with my... No, no. Everything you say just did sleep in hall. We don't know that. And I'm about to ask about what time this happened. But you're out and about. What time did this happen? Out and about. What time did it happen? Because we're going to call. Well, we're going to call. There'll be a police report. What time? Roughly, was it was it night? Was it nighttime it was, or daytime? It was most definitely nighttime. nighttime like I can't remember the time. I was, I remember I passed out. I probably roughly around nine o'clock, around late eight o'clock, early nine o'clock, around that time. My late eight o'clock around that time. <clears throat> Look into that, please. Yes, sure. Find out. 
they just they shouldn't make sure that, that he's not birthing a curfew. But we certainly, you're living some, you just had blurted out, you were, you're living over there. We don't know that. Do we? No. That's something else you're supposed to That was enough. I don't really feel. Why were you staying there? That was that was actually my mom's address. Mm -hmm. And I was over there. She just currently had a stroke. And actually, around that area, it's a lot of carjacking around that time. And I went out at the wrong time to check the mail, and I got shot. And I don't know who shot me. I don't know anything. I ran and feared for my life. But I can name for sure it happened around like late eight o'clock. It was nighttime. No, no, but you got hurt you from being sick. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And I'm in here tonight at 10. It says you live in uh, Cumberland. No, I don't live there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what the probation has. Either. That's on the indictment. What, what are you that was, I have Man. I'm sorry. What was it? I just I have this 20 East Lucas. But that's not where this happened. No, that's not where that happened. That's where I stay with my grandmother. But it's supposed to know where you are when you change your residence. No, I still stay on 20 East Lucas. I don't even know where you sleep at night, every night. You see, I, I mean, that, if that were true, we'd have probation officer, we'd have probationers sleeping in a different place every night. We'd never know where they are. We're supposed to know where you are so we can supervise you. Yes, sir. Where you stay live? with? I stay with my grandmother. That's not what you told her. I think what he's saying is that his his permanent address is his address address is the Lucas huh? location. But I think that he's saying that he wants to know where you are, okay. so that we can monitor okay. if necessary. Yes, sir. We can go find you okay. if necessary. Otherwise, you're not on super. We're not supervising. We know where you are. It happened. Before I make every night, I make sure I'm in the house by 10 o'clock. Before right, 10 o'clock, okay. which house we don't know which house Easy. it does. We how can we monitor you if you're somewhere on this planet in, with some with seven billion homes on the planet? How are we supposed to be able to supervise you? I don't, and you said, Well, I was in it, and how do we know? We don't know where you are. We ought to be able to go walk up to the door, knock on the door, and say, Hello, where are you? And David, I also come have on up and you come up to the here. I am it's good, thank you. Did well, and we move on. And he was on ankle monitor at the time, your honor, so it wasn't so for it worth it. Makes yeah, no, but we can't be tracking them down with an ankle monitor. <laughs> and I think his issue is he's probably not being able to explain it really well. Is that he was staying with his mom for a right. night or so? It wasn't the thing just didn't start, this parent didn't go off well at all because he's got an honesty issue. He's got his fourth right now. I think some of that might be fear, Your Honor. I think he's fear. very, very afraid. We all fear telling, telling a lie under oath. I understand. That's a burden. <laughs> yeah, 13 days. So you won't get much time credit if I sentence you to 10 years. Any violation is enough to do that. 13 days doesn't get you out of prison earlier. All right. What do y'all say? Your Honor, just based on Your Honor, the court's aware, obviously, of the issues here involved. Yeah, uh, we just uh, leave it with the court uh, to decide. Well, I, I know he's got a health yeah. conditions, uh, so I'm not, you know, with the jail being able to take care of that, I'm not sure. Uh, but obviously, there's... Okay, with the health conditions, what health conditions... What requires you to have medical assistance every day? Do you? Do you need medical assistance every day? God. I have a catheter. Well, that thing out. Okay, you have a catheter, but, but you, do you have to have assistance or can you take care of that yourself? Uh, I have I have a catheter. Too. I have one. How Everybody's had kidney stones. And buddy, 
but I didn't have half the planet take care of me. I mean, I took care of myself on that, and I could, uh, like everybody else, can take care of unless you have special circumstances. A catheter doesn't mean that you can't take care of yourself and have a catheter. How often do you go to the doctor? How often do you have doctor visits? Um, I have a follow up every thirty days. Every thirty days. I have another. I actually have another follow up, which is in March, March twenty second. Do you have this? You said you had to have another surgery coming up. Do you have that scheduled yet, or are you gonna find that out soon? I'm gonna find that out March twenty second. I know I need surgery, but I will get the official day on March twenty second, and. March 22nd, day March 22nd is a Wednesday. Okay. Anything else? Not too much. Just the fact that he's got some issues, and I think this is not a situation where we want to put this individual in jail. Maybe huh? I said, I, I this situation, I don't think we want to put him in custody because of his medical situation right now. I'm in disagreement. Oh, okay. He's done enough to convince me that. You're going to need some tinkering. Sorry. I'm going to find it. Nothing further. There is sufficient evidence to support this first amended motion to revoke unadjudicated probation by a preponderance of the evidence of greater. Its allegations two, three, and five have been proven true. Uh, and that that is enough to grant this motion and revoke your probation. I'm going to find, though, that I'm going, I think what I'm going to do is. Uh, is uh, order an amendment. I'm going to continue probation. You're going to do 30 days in the county jail on weekends, successive weekends. Yes, sir. And then you'll get two days. So that means you're going to do 15 weekends. I can do that. Just do it. Yes, sir. Don't just talk. The talk. Walk. That's what's once said. But uh, between <clears throat> your failure to be forthright and flirting around with these violations and not keeping the probation officer completely informed about your whereabouts, uh, I don't like this. And we're going to follow up. I, wanna, I would like to know about your uh, report and see what the circumstances were. I don't want to hear about him bursting a curfew, being out, taking a bullet. On our watch, when he's, you know, we don't know where the heck he really is. That's not, yes, sir. Thing. For us to supervise you, we have to know where you want, though. But you're taking this. And actually, right now, I, I stay with my grandma, and my mother just moved with us because she just had a stroke. So I'm um, having to take care of really both of them because. They well, both you got to take people who rely on you. You got to be I'm the only. Be more responsible than you backed it, sir. Yes, okay. I think we're all in agreement with that. But again, another thing is be honest. Yes, be honest. Yes, your own nose. Just when I get you in a lie, whole face to this court. That's just not right. Because things are always, we can work things out. Sometimes it's things, sometimes it's just easy to fix. But to play cat and mouse, and I can seek with the truth is no way of handling your responsibilities with this probation. And the probation officer, she's your lifeline. Every every probationer trips, every one of them trips sometime along probation. But they're forthright and they're honest about it. And it works out for the most part fine, but without any bruising. Um, so you begin uh, tomorrow, August four six at the bottom of the end, and each weekend, each Friday thereafter, until thirty days of service on the weekends, and also the all kind. Yes, sir. I'll check. But I didn't see him in the system as a I searched under victim name. There was not an incident, but I'll call Walmart PD and ask about that date, and I'll call up with Daniel about that. Okay. All right. Who do you want to see him back, sir? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes, okay. Carlos Garcia is next. 